cosmonaut Pyotr Dubrov after almost a year in space for those two and 176 days in space for Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov. The trio are suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits, ready for a deorbit burn of 4 minute 39 second retrograde firing, a braking maneuver, so ready for a DMS-19 engine, 4 minute to, 39 uh, complete, second uh, retrograde trip firing, a braking maneuver, so ready for a deorbit that undocked from the International Space Station almost three hours ago. Everything aboard the Soyuz spacecraft is in readiness for the deorbit burn that will enable the Soyuz to drop out of orbit and begin its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere with all of its uh, systems honed in on a remote landing site southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan, and a parachute-assisted landing that will bring to an end for Vandehai and Dubrov what amounts to a 150.6 million mile mission, the equivalent of some 312 round trips to the moon. Shkaplerov wrapping up 176 days in space, Vandehai and Dubrov wrapping up 355 days in space. For Vandehai, that is a record for a single space flight by a U.S. astronaut. Late uh, Tuesday night, the uh, departing crew members gathered in the Rosviet module of the International Space Station to uh, say their farewells. Van de Hei on the left, Dubrov and Shkaplerov nearby, Oleg Artemiev, uh, the newly arrived Russian cosmonaut, uh, by the hatchway as they said goodbye to their Expedition 66 counterparts and made their way through the hatch into the Soyuz MS-19 to begin undocking preparations. They conducted leak checks at the docking interface between the Soyuz and the Rosviet module, then suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits and uh, began uh, final preparations for the undocking of the Soyuz from the Rosviet module. That undocking uh, occurred at uh, 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time, as the International Space Station flew over the South Atlantic at an altitude of 260 statute miles. Slowly but surely, the Soyuz backed away from the Rosviet module. A uh, back-away burn uh, of 13 seconds enabled uh, the Soyuz to move to a distance of about 70 meters from the International Space Station, at which point uh, Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov took over manual control of the flying of the Soyuz to enable his uh, cosmonaut crewmate, Pyotr Dubrov, to move into the upper section of the Soyuz, or the orbital module, to begin about 30 minutes of uh, videography and still photography of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Once uh, that was complete, uh, Dubrov uh, returned to the descent module, the center section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft. He buckled up once again in the left seat, Shkaplerov in the center seat, and Mark Vandehei in the right seat of the descent module, preparing for the deorbit burn that is now just over 15 minutes from now. Mark Vandehei's uh, homecoming uh, in just over an hour for a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan will wrap up, as we mentioned, a 355-day mission for Vandehei. Uh, the completion of his second flight to the International Space Station puts him third on the all-time list of U.S. astronauts at 523 days in space behind Peggy Whitson and Jeff Williams. Vandehei, uh, in this mission, again, uh, he did not conduct any spacewalks, but uh, with his 355 days, he eclipses uh, the previous single spaceflight record by a U.S. astronaut of 340 days set by Scott Kelly several years ago. Anton Shkaplerov is wrapping up, as we mentioned, 176 days in space. He, uh, now with four missions to the International Space Station, will have logged at the time of landing 708 days in space. That puts him seventh on the all-time list of endurance leaders for human spaceflight. A contingent of uh, Ros Aviatsa search and recovery personnel and NASA support personnel uh, flew on an Antonov 26 aircraft uh, earlier this morning from the primary staging city in Kazakhstan of Karaganda on an Antonov 26 aircraft. They flew to Jezkazgan, the intermediary uh, staging city, uh, to the southwest. 
in Jez Kazgan. Uh, they have now boarded helicopters uh, at the Jez Kazgan airport, ready to take off in sequential fashion around the time of the deorbit burn for about a 35-minute flight uh, to the southeast to the landing site that is uh, about 90 miles away from Jez Kazgan. There, the... Uh, Six primary helicopters involved in uh, tonight's landing operations, Russian Mi-8 helicopters, will uh, form a uh, circular racetrack oval pattern around the landing zone, awaiting the arrival of the Soyuz under its main parachute and uh, touchdown, after which they will land in sequential fashion in rather rapid fashion. Uh, the uh, RSC Energia personnel uh, that will be the first on the scene will erect an inflatable medical tent, and uh, the work will be underway to safe the vehicle uh, and uh, to extract the three crew members from the Soyuz, place them in chairs by the capsule, and then carry them in those chairs to that medical tent where they'll get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits and into more comfortable clothing, flight suits, for a two-hour helicopter ride back to Karaganda. It is there that the crew will split up with Van de Heij boarding a NASA jet bound for Houston. The two cosmonauts will be on a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft bound for their training base home in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. Last week, I had an opportunity to chat with uh, Mark Van de Heij on board the International Space Station for a few minutes, and he talked uh, and discussed his thoughts about uh, the deorbit burn, the ride home in a Soyuz vehicle, and uh, a wrap-up, basically the big-picture wrap-up of what his year in space has been all about. Mark, this will be your second landing in a Soyuz spacecraft. Knowing now the dynamics of a Soyuz entry and landing and how that all works, can you walk us through what one astronaut once called a ride comparable to an e-ticket at Disneyland? Sure, I will definitely do that. So um, the first surprise for me on my last return to Earth, my last descent, was how funny it feels when the hooks are unlashed from the space station and you feel like you're the cork being popped off a bottle. You just get this kind of a popping sensation, just start drifting away. We don't fire any thrusters. It just feels very, very gentle as we drift away from the space station. After some time, we reorient and do the deorbit burn. Not very dramatic there until we get low enough where t so we start interacting with the atmosphere. And then you can see lots of flashes of light as uh, the, the well-designed spacecraft has parts that burn away to help get rid of all that energy and to pass successfully through the heat of reentry. And then there's this long period of waiting for the parachute to open. Last time, I was not aware of how afraid I was about what was going to happen as you're just waiting to find out if you're going to live or die because it all depends on whether that parachute opens up. I didn't realize how scared I probably was until I felt this incredible glee as I was getting shaken all over the place as the parachute opened up in a, or nominally in a, uh, a position where the spacecraft, again, nominally starts to oscillate violently back and forth. But some people that's very nauseating for. For me, I, was, I just had a wonderful sense of glee because I knew it was working out for us. And then after that... Uh, it's, uh, again, you have to have some patience while you're waiting to hit the ground. The uh, search and rescue forces, I expect, assuming the weather's good enough for them to be able to see us, will help us uh, by telling us how far above the ground they think we are at, at, while we're watching our data on the spacecraft. This time I'll make extra sure that my head is in the seat because we really hit very, very hard, hard enough where when I hit the ground, my first emotion was anger that uh, I would be hit that hard. It was all fine. No problems, no health problems as a result of the spacecraft. It worked very, very well. But I will not forget that emotion. And then there's another, there's some moments of waiting. Uh, last time, 
we were on the plains of Kazakhstan in February. I was looking forward to smelling the uh, the smell of dirt and vegetation, but on the steppes of Asia in February, there was just ice and the smell of uh, helicopter fuel as the helicopters that were helping get all the resources to us were in our vicinity. This time being later in the year, I'm hoping I might get a little bit of the smell of the spring. We'll see. And uh, that's the whole story. You're landing uh, about uh, not quite two and a half hours before sunset on uh, March 30th. And they were told the temperature is going to be in the 50s Fahrenheit. So it's probably not going to be as icy as you experienced the first time around. But assuming you get the opportunity to get those smells and the sensations, what's really the first thing or the one major thing you're looking forward to the most uh, once you get back on Earth? Uh, making a cup of coffee for my wife and myself and then sitting in bed and talking to each other while we're either reading or catching up on the news. Just having relaxing Saturday mornings is a wonderful thing. And then after that, I'd probably say guacamole and chips. Mark, a final question. We always ask this ethereal question, but in a big picture sense, if you uh, sit down in the weeks, months, years ahead to write the legacy of the ISS from your perspective, particularly for this past year, what would be your impression, your thoughts about the lasting legacy of the International Space Station? I think we will always look back on the International Space Station as being a fantastic example of what humanity can do when we cooperate like we do on the space station. This is a very challenging time for international relations. My hope is that in our attempts to, to further and find peace throughout the world, that these type of connections that we have can be maintained and find and serve as a path forward to try to find that common ground that we need so desperately to find peace. Mark Van de Heij, uh, it's been a pleasure to be working with you again and over the past year on this, uh, your second uh, space flight. Uh, your name etched in the, in the history books of U.S. human space flight, certainly. We appreciate everything you've done and wish you all the best and soft landings in Kazakhstan. U.S. record holder Mark Van de Heij, about to wrap up 355 days in space. We're just six minutes away now from the start of the engine firing, the deorbit burn, a four minute, 39 second retrograde braking maneuver that will slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit for the final ride back to the steppe of Kazakhstan. Some 28 minutes after uh, the deorbit burn, there will be the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz. That will occur at 6.02 a.m. Central Time. The only section uh, that matters is the descent module. Uh, that is where the crew is strapped in. Anton Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander in the center seat, flanked on his left by Pyotr Dubrov and on his right by Van de Heij, the uh, heat shield facing the direction of travel to repel uh, the buildup of heat to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit around the Soyuz itself. The um, three uh, crew members will uh, enter the Earth's atmosphere at 6.05 a.m. Central Time, uh, at about uh, an altitude of 61.8 miles. Uh, they uh, will soon enter into a plasma regime uh, where the peak heating around the Soyuz will begin. They exit that about five minutes later with a maximum G load on them of about four to five Gs. And then the important command to open chutes will occur just uh, about 15 minutes before touchdown at an altitude of 6.6 .6 miles, where um, the parachute deployment sequence triggered by a barometric pressure sensor begins. A main parachute cover is jettisoned, pulling out two extraction chutes, which in turn pulls out a drogue chute, and then in turn pulls out the main parachute. Just a few seconds before touchdown, soft landing engines will fire in a final braking maneuver, and the crew will be home. Touchdown is scheduled at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.28 p.m. in Kazakhstan, two hours and 20 minutes before sunset. 
The weather at the landing site is uh, very, very good for today's uh, landing. Uh, scattered clouds at about 23,000 feet, moderate winds, nothing of any significance, and the temperature at landing time is expected to be about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. At the airport in Jezkazgan, uh, the uh, search and recovery personnel and the NASA support personnel are in their respective helicopters. Rotors are running. The first helicopters will be airborne uh, at around the time of the deorbit burn, just a few minutes from now, headed uh, to the southeast to the landing zone. Again, about a 35-minute helicopter ride from Jezkazgan to that landing site. At the landing site, an Antonov-26 fixed-wing aircraft that transported the uh, recovery team from Karaganda earlier this morning will be flying in the vicinity of the landing site, acting as a, uh, as a relay station, if you will, a command and control center to relay voice and data back to Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karayov outside of Moscow. The control that the Angular 8 integrated unit builds uh, is powered, uh, that it is ready, just one minute before the burn. All right, will do. I am ready to send J3 command. This is Piotr. Moscow uh, R31, go ahead, Anton. We are ready to issue. So we had a break and calm, or we did not copy you last, I see. So there is a lot of background noise, but please still provide a running commentary. We copy you, Moscow. We're coming up on one minute prior to the start of the deorbit burn. Again, a four minute, 39 second braking maneuver. Following the completion of the deorbit burn, uh, the upper portion of the Soyuz, the orbital module, will be depressurized. That is in advance of the pyrotechnic separation of the three modules, the three sections of the uh, Soyuz spacecraft that will occur about 28 minutes after the deorbit burn is complete. And the vessel in attitude also is confirmed and uh, the uh, stabilization mode is on and we can see the message that SKD cover is open. Copy. The engine cover is open, standing by for the start of the deorbit burn. We have sent J3 and A1 command is also and uh, it is illuminated, so the uh, escada thruster uh, cover is open 15 seconds until escada firing, escada firing. Copy, please provide running commentary. Copy. And the deorbit burn is now underway. Good pressure readings, good impulse. This uh, burn will last four minutes, 39 seconds, slowing the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second. You will hear uh, Shkaplerov reporting uh, chamber pressures as uh, the burn continues. Attitude is nominal. Copy. 18.2 is the burn duration. 22 is the burn. Cadeau parameters are nominal. 
one minute of 0.45, and the attitude is nominal. A little over three and a half minutes to go in the deorbit burn. Everything looking good so far. One minute twenty. Thirty-five point five is the burn. Parameters of KDU are nominal. Attitude is nominal. KDU parameters are nominal. Forty-five is the burn. One minute fifty, the burn is fifty. The numbers being read off by Schkaplerov through the interpreter indicate uh, the duration of the burn so far and how much deceleration is being experienced uh, based on uh, sensors and other computer data being registered on board the Soyuz vehicle. Two minutes, 15 seconds, 60 is the burn value. Sixty-four is the burn value. Cadeau parameters are nominal. Two point five minutes. Sixty-seven is the burn. Uh, the attitude is nominal. Cadeau parameters. Two minutes to go in the deorbit burn. Is the burn value. Two minutes forty-five. Seventy-four is the burn value. Eighty-nine is the burn value. Cadeau parameters are nominal. Ninety-two is the burn value. Three point five minutes duration. Ninety-four is the burn value. Zero forty-five is the acceleration. The attitude is nominal, and Cadeau parameters are nominal. Ninety-seven is the burn value. Three forty-five one hundred is the burn value. Zero point forty-five. Uh, is acceleration, cadeau parameters are nominal. Less than a minute to go in the deorbit burn. The first helicopters are now airborne out of Jezkazgan, heading for the landing site. 1.5.6, 1.5.6. Four minutes, uh, the attitude is nominal, cadeau parameters uh, are nominal. For 10, the burn value is 112. 115 is the burn value. Standing by for the completion of the deorbit burn. 120 is the burn value. 4.5 minutes, 121 is the burn value. The deorbit burn now complete. And good reports from the Russian Mission Control Center, a uh, successful deorbit burn right on the numbers. Mark Vandehai, Pyotr Dubrov, Anton Shkaplerov heading back to Earth. The time until separation. Copy. Uh, so the next milestone, about 23 minutes from now, with the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle. Yes, it is decreasing. Copy. We are going to page 56. Copy. We confirm. So the burn is complete. Uh, 128.0 is the burn value. Copy.
With the deorbit burn complete, uh, the next milestone, as mentioned, is the module separation. This is a pyrotechnic uh, activity in which the three sections of the Soyuz separate. The descent module, the center section uh, where the crew is strapped into their respective seats, uh, will then uh, enter the atmosphere, heat shield in the direction of travel to repel the buildup of plasma and uh, temperatures around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Later, uh, the uh, drug chute will be deployed, followed by the main parachute. And from that point on, about 15 minutes after chute deploy, the last major event is just seconds off the ground where the firing of the soft landing engines and a final braking maneuver, and the crew will be back on Earth. The uh, parachute deployment sequence, very interesting. Uh, that parachute deployment sequence triggered by a barometric pressure sensor at about 41,000 feet above the ground. At this point, the main parachute cover is jettisoned by pyros and springs, pulling out two extraction chutes, which in, turns pull, uh, which in turn pulls out the drogue chute and then the main chute. It takes about 20 seconds for all this to happen. At about uh, 21,000 feet, another sensor starts a timer triggering most of the remaining events in the landing sequence. About uh, 18,000 feet off the ground, commands are issued to jettison uh, the heat shield on the Soyuz, no longer needed, to inhibit the entry control thrusters and to open valves that vent hydrogen peroxide fuel for the entry control thrusters and oxygen in the life support system tank. So the white vapor that uh, you have seen on previous Soyuz landings, if uh, the visibility allows that uh, to be seen by uh, long-range cameras at the landing site. Uh, the purpose of that venting uh, and the uh, white vapor that is venting into the air is a combination of hydrogen peroxide and oxygen to safe the vehicle for landing so that no hazardous gases remain in those tanks when the soft landing thrusters are fired and the vehicle impacts the ground. That way the uh, ground support personnel can approach the vehicle very quickly without any uh, toxic fuels surrounding the spacecraft itself. So uh, a very intricate number of activities uh, yet to come uh, that uh, will bring Vandehei, Dubrov, and Shkaplerov home after their mission. Uh, Vandehei and Dubrov completing 355 days in space. A uh, very long mission that began uh, last April 9th of 2021 with a launch on the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Shkaplerov launched last October on the Soyuz MS-19 that he's returning home in today. Shkaplerov uh, will have completed 176 days in space and 708 days in space on his four flights. For Vandehei, the uh, single uh, U.S. spaceflight uh, endurance record holder uh, that uh, eclipsed Scott Kelly's record back on March 15th. He's completing 5,680 orbits of the Earth, an emission spanning 150.6 million miles. Guys, my crew, uh, how are you feeling? Great. Those are the last, our, our last minutes in wait, listeners. Unintelligible. Moscow, come again. We did not copy you last. Go ahead, Asti. You said something, Moscow. Maybe Piotr is missing uh, gravity, right? Or he spent a whole year on the station. Yes, that's correct. Yes, absolutely. It's my dream uh, to to feel the Earth gravity again.
through the translator, Pyotr Dubrov, uh, saying that it, it is his dream to feel gravity once again. Uh, he and Mark Vandehei will feel the first tug of gravity on their bodies at about 6.05 a.m. Central Time, some uh, 20 minutes from now, at entry interface. Fifteen point five minutes until separation. Copy, Anton. About ten minutes from now, just as a heads up, uh, the Soyuz will be some two hundred kilometers away from the International Space Station. This is approximately the point, and it varies from entry to entry, but this is approximately the time when VHF voice communications may become a bit choppy and unreliable. So there could be dropouts. Uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, have uh, instructed uh, Shkaplerov to continue to provide status reports even if they're not being received on the ground when uh, the Soyuz is within range of the Antonov-26 fixed-wing aircraft at the landing site. Again, that will serve as a flying command and control center to relay data and information back to the Russian uh, flight controllers that you see there in this balcony view uh, of the control room in Korolev outside of Moscow. So uh, do not... Uh, do not fret if we lose communications with the crew. That is expected and is usually the case during a Soyuz entry back to Earth. Countdown clocks here in uh, Mission Control ticking backward toward the expected landing time some 38 minutes from now. The landing zone some 90 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. The search and recovery forces and NASA support personnel are airborne now. Out of Jezkazgan, the intermediary staging site, heading for the landing site, they'll arrive uh, in a circular pattern, an oval-shaped pattern flying around the landing site with eyes peeled uh, for that familiar orange and white main parachute prior to touchdown. The chutes uh, deploy about 15 minutes before touchdown.
So what page is that? Page 56? Astrea, yes, it's a go to start the preparation for the module separation, stage 56. We copy Moscow. So the KSS rescue aid uh, are, are ready. So should we close the visors? Breaking up. So the F3 command uh, should be sent. It's a go. Copy and a uh, rotational hand controller is in the transport position. Well done. Okay, I need a uh, rules. Okay, manual entry control uh, is here. I'm holding it, and uh, uh, I'm activating. I'm powering it on. We're about eight minutes away from uh, the expected module separation, the next milestone on the road home for Van de Heide, Dubrov, and uh, Shkaplerov. So the uh, manual entry control uh, is powered, copied. So we are starting to tighten, tighten our uh, safety belts and straps. So, Piotr, you have a KSP panel uh, on the left side, and I'm going to the descent display. Moscow, I uh, confirm the Angular Rate Integrated Unit bills on the display, descent display, and I'm releasing push to talk button. Uh, yes, you please use push to talk button only and uh, do not uh, secure it.
Некоторые по возможности ведите репортаж о прохождении меток программы разделения. Astray, if possible, please report on the on how you go through the separation timeline. This is Mission Control Houston. We're uh, about three minutes away from the expected separation of modules. The three sections will pyrotechnically separate on computer command. The descent module, Anton Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander in the center seat, flanked on his left by Pyotr Dubrov and on his right by NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei. The descent module uh, with the heat shield facing the direction of travel uh, will begin uh, to enter the Earth's atmosphere at about 6.05 a.m. Central Time. And uh, a plasma buildup around the spacecraft, peak heating, if you will, uh, will occur about a minute and a half after entry interface at an altitude of some 50 miles above the Earth. This is Mission Control Houston. All of the uh, programmed uh, commands have been issued uh, for the pyrotechnic separation of the modules. We're standing by for confirmation of that event. And we have confirmation of module separation right on time. Two and a half minutes away from entry interface at an altitude of 62 miles. That will be the uh, first pull of gravity for Mark Vandehei and Pyotr Dubrov in almost a year.
24 and a half minutes until the expected touchdown of the Soyuz MS-19 on the steppe of Kazakhstan. All of the search and recovery helicopters are airborne, heading from Jezkazgan uh, to the southeast, about 90 miles from Jezkazgan to the landing site. They will arrive uh, shortly before touchdown, form a uh, circular racetrack pattern around the landing zone with... Uh, the parachute, uh, the main parachute for the Soyuz as their target. Once the Soyuz touches down, they'll begin uh, to descend and land in sequential fashion so that uh, the recovery operations and the extraction of the crew can proceed as expeditiously as possible. With everything uh, proceeding on track, the Soyuz and its three crew members uh, should have entered uh, the Earth's atmosphere moments ago. They'll begin to see a, a buildup of plasma around their spacecraft uh, just about a minute and a half from now. Less than 22 minutes before touchdown. Unintelligible. The uh, Soyuz has entered uh, the plasma regime, where temperatures around the vehicle building up to some 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit repelled by its heat shield. We expect uh, the uh, spacecraft to exit that uh, plasma regime about three and a half minutes from now.
Again, uh, this is the uh, point of entry for the Soyuz vehicle where communications are often uh, lost for a period of time or choppy at best due to the uh, distance uh, between the Soyuz and the International Space Station. Better communications will uh, occur once the Soyuz is in closer proximity to the landing site, relaying uh, through VHF voice capability through the Antonov 26 command and control aircraft flying over the landing zone. Just over 17 minutes until touchdown. All of the uh, deorbit and entry uh, milestones have uh, passed in good shape. The last report uh, that we got from Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov indicated that uh, the crew was feeling well and ready for touchdown. Astray. What's your descent status? Everything's uh, nominal, 4.65. And what's for the TVM? It's plus 7. We are feeling great. 4.65 Gs. We are feeling great. Uh, Gs are decreasing, 4.1. How are you feeling? And what's the SAP pressure? We are feeling great. SAP pressure is 5.8. Eight. Out of the plasma regime, uh, Anton Shkaplerov reporting that the crew is feeling great. We are about a minute away from the expected uh, command to open the parachutes. And we're standing by for the jettisoning of the uh, main parachute. Please uh, provide a running commentary if you can. 2.4 is a G. Load. It's decreasing. 2.1 now for G loads. G load is 1.6. We are standing by for the jettisoning of the main parachute. The rescue aids are going to be primed in 40 seconds. Are you still standing by for them? Yes, we are. Copy.
standing by for further uh, voice communication between uh, the Soyuz MS-19 and the Antonov-26 fixed-wing aircraft acting as a relay station to flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center. This is Mission Control Houston. We're uh, standing by for uh, regaining uh, voice communication with the Soyuz crew. At this point, the parachutes uh, should have deployed. We're about 11 and a half minutes away from touchdown.
And there's our uh, Soyuz MS-19 under the orange and white parachute, less than eight minutes before touchdown. Partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the mid-40s Fahrenheit. The search and recovery forces now have reestablished contact with the crew on board uh, the Soyuz MS-19 under the command of Anton Shkaplerov. The uh, Soyuz uh, descending under its parachute, having jettisoned uh, the heat shield and uh, having uh, vented, as planned, uh, a combination of hydrogen peroxide and uh, oxygen to uh, safe uh, the vehicle from uh, the dispelling of any toxic fuels after touchdown. We're just over seven minutes before landing to wrap up a year-long mission for Mark Van de Heij and Pyotr Dubrov and 176 days in space for Anton Shkaplerov. All of the entry events have gone uh, as planned crew at last report indicating that they were feeling great. All of the uh, helicopters associated with the search and recovery forces and NASA support personnel on board are in a uh, circular uh, flying pattern around that landing zone with eyes on the uh, Soyuz under its main chute. The uh, crew is uh, talking with the search and recovery forces. And that's the where the familiar uh, radio beacon providing um, uh, landing uh, information and other systems information uh, to the Antonov 26 being relayed back to the Russian flight the controllers really outside fine. of Moscow. The barometric data on the panel shows 2500, and we copy. Approximately four and a half minutes until touchdown, the late afternoon sun at the landing site in Kazakhstan, glinting off of the Soyuz MS-19 as it uh, continues a nominal descent back to the south central steppe of Kazakhstan. This landing uh, occurring about two hours and 20 minutes before sunset. The 2000 altitude based on barometric data. We copy. It's 1,830. Before long, uh, we should see uh, some of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters with search and recovery personnel flying uh, in the neighborhood of the Soyuz on its descent pattern. Once the Soyuz touches down, those helicopters uh, will land uh, rather quickly in sequential fashion to begin uh, the process of uh, attending uh, to safing of the vehicle and then the extraction of the crew.
1,470 is the barometric data. The crew is feeling fine. One thousand uh, altitude for barometric data. The crew is feeling fine. Less than two minutes before touchdown. The crew feeling fine. Everything going by the book. Yeah, we're copying. Six hundred with copy. And we copy four hundred. Three hundred. Copy. Our communication stopping. We're preparing for landing. We should uh, see the horizon uh, momentarily. There's one of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters as we stand by for touchdown. Touchdown. Touchdown confirmed at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.28 p.m. at the landing site. Mark van der Heij and Piotr Dubrov back home one year after leaving the planet. Soyuz MS-19 under the command of Anton Shkaplerov back on Earth along with Mark van der Heij and uh, Pyotr Dubrov. A nominal entry, a perfect landing, a bullseye touchdown as the uh, Russian search and recovery forces in the Mi-8 helicopters uh, begin uh, the process of landing sequentially. There's one of those helicopters. They will be in the neighborhood of the uh, Soyuz capsule momentarily to begin first uh, to uh, erect an inflatable medical tent and then uh, safe the vehicle before the crew uh, is extracted from the spacecraft. They undocked uh, from the uh, Rosviet module of the International Space Station just over four hours ago at uh, 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time. The deorbit burn was executed less than an hour ago in perfect fashion, and all of the entry milestones of module separation, entry interface, and the deployment of the main parachute, as you saw, all of that went uh, as planned.
As you see, uh, the uh, parachute uh, still attached to the Soyuz MS-19 and several of the uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters nearby to begin uh, the process of safing the vehicle and extracting the crew. We expect, uh, as is normally the case, uh, for the video to uh, be discontinued for a short period of time so that the uh, TV truck repositions itself by the spacecraft, at which point uh, we will regain video from the landing site. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, continuing uh, to receive video from the landing site in Kazakhstan some five minutes after the touchdown of Soyuz MS-19, about 90 miles to the southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan, two hours and 20 minutes before sunset there. Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, have uh, continued uh, the process of landing in the neighborhood of the spacecraft. Other support personnel in all-terrain vehicles are uh, moving up to the uh, spacecraft to begin erecting an inflatable medical tent uh, within which uh, the crew will be brought uh, after a short time outside of uh, the Soyuz to uh, get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits and into more comfortable flight clothing as well as uh, to undergo initial medical testing before they board those helicopters for a two-hour flight back to the staging city of Karaganda to the northeast, where the crew ultimately will split up several hours from now, Mark Vandehei boarding a NASA jet to return to Houston, Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft headed for their training base at Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. Station on two, the connectivity readings for the aft suit are point zero four and for the forward suit point zero three. 
Okay, Roger, we copy. This is Mission Control Houston uh, receiving word from the search and recovery forces that the Soyuz uh, landed and uh, was pulled over by uh, the wind. Well, that is uh, not unusual. So the Soyuz is on its side, and the search uh, and recovery uh, personnel are beginning the process of uh, safing the vehicle. The Soyuz on its side. As expected, uh, the uh, TV signal from the landing site uh, temporarily discontinued uh, while the TV operation uh, personnel uh, make their way to the capsule itself, at which point we uh, fully expect that we will regain uh, the television signal to uh, see the crew either in the process of or already out of the uh, spacecraft. Touchdown occurred right on time. That's 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.28 p.m. at the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan.
The uh, search and recovery forces are continuing uh, the early process of uh, safing uh, the Soyuz MS-19. They will be extracting the crew very shortly. The uh, Soyuz landed uh, on its side with the uh, winds of a moderate uh, velocity out at the landing site, uh, pulling the parachute over and uh, in turn pulling the Soyuz on its side following touchdown. Mark van der Heij and Piotr Dubrov completing 355 days in space and aboard the International Space Station, completing a mission of 150.6 million miles. Van der Heij uh, coming home with the uh, record for the longest single space flight by a U.S. astronaut, eclipsing uh, the former record held by Scott Kelly by 15 days bringing uh, him to a total of 523 days, third on the all-time uh, endurance list. And we're back uh, with live video from the landing site. Uh, Anton Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander, out of the spacecraft. Great air and no dust. Do you rem remember me? Oh, sure. And thank you. Not too many people here. This is great. Everything is fine. Take the measurements, please. Do you want glasses? Sure, why not?
Anton Shkaplerov, uh, the Soyuz commander, having completed his fourth flight into space and to the International Space Station, 708 days in space for Shkaplerov, seventh on the all-time endurance list. And as we mentioned uh, earlier, the Soyuz on its side, it did land upright, uh, but was pulled over on its side uh, as oh, uh, its large uh, main excellent parachute uh, was caught by the wind and pulled the Soyuz over. And we'll take some more measurements. And um, uh, how are you feeling? Oh, great people here. It's a pleasure to see you. It's uh, like we never left. We, you saw me off, and now you're seeing me back. So how, how did, did the descent go? Oh, everything went nominal. The uh, helicopters found us very quickly, just as the chute opened and then the helicopters were found. I would like to thank everybody who has come here to attend the landing, all the uh, search and rescue people for very well coordinated work. It's complicated work and we're so glad that there are people here who know the job and they're high level at doing everything that is possible in their complex work. I should. <laughs> and congratulations. Oh, thank you. Are you cold? No, everything is fine. Uh, would you like some tea with lemon? Or oh, with um, rose hips? That's great. Uh, good. good to see you. I was so glad that they found us so quickly. Andrei and Anton. It's a pleasure to see you here. And thank you for your work and thank you for your help. How are you doing? Everything is fine. Huh? Are you, is, is it cold? No, it's not cold. It's fine. The tea is great. Very tasty. And the tea here is much tastier. Uh, once you're on your homeland, that makes everything feel better. And just a moment. There's some dust from the blown by the wind. All good. Thank you. 
Не просили второй занят. Во время. Сказали? Здесь, да? Вот так. А мне надо передать письмо. Я вот там с парашютом занимаюсь. Сергей? Олег просил. У него фамилия такая крутая. Сапер. Лысый такой. Классный. Без There's a letter I need to give to that person. Yeah, we'll find him. We'll just take a few measurements here and then. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, some 24 minutes following the uh, landing of the Soyuz MS-19, you see uh, RSC uh, Energia and search and recovery personnel uh, working uh, on the continuing extraction of the other two crew members, Mark Van de Heij and Piotr Dubrov. Anton Shkaplerov was first out, as is typically the case with the Soyuz commander occupying the center seat. He uh, will always uh, be extracted first to open a pathway, if you will, for the extraction of the other two crew members. And Piotr Dubrov. Outside of uh, the uh, Soyuz capsule, 355 days in space. He and Mark Van de Heij having launched together last April 9th. I wouldn't mind flying somewhere. I think my watch fell off and it's uh, there somewhere. Uh, and the helicopters are set up over there. Are you getting the signal? Uh, we'll be done shortly. I can see him. Uh, we'll uh, relocate them together with the chairs and we can wrap up here. And NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij now out of the Soyuz spacecraft.
The last night of the flight, uh, we were in the cupola. Are you? Is this the second measurement? Yes, it is. There should be some baseball caps. Baseball caps are right. Might be a blue bag, not in the red bag. Blue bag. I'm pretty sure I got some. We gotta get the chin on though. Yeah. I don't want the glasses. It's too beautiful out here. And don't move, don't move. Uh, is there any tea? Yes, uh, sure. And uh, let's find a cup. I think we have some disposable cups there. The tea was very good. I will show you on the big screen. Everything is ready. The cameras come from both sides. Oh, I feel like a star. And here's some people from the Minister of Defense. They can see you, and so you're welcome to send hello. So now that I'm on the ground, uh, I am sending my regards from the ground rather than from space. The weather is beautiful. Everything went nominal, no injuries, none, nobody was hurt, even though during the training they and uh, expecting the landing, they told us that the weather was going to be bad, but the weather was perfect and everything is according to plan. Now we are going to proceed to rehabilitate from the flight. A little more than uh, 30 minutes after the Soyuz landed uh, on the steppe of Kazakhstan, right on target. The three crew members are out, enjoying uh, the smell of fresh air. For Vanda High and Dubrov, uh, the uh, sights and sounds of planet Earth for the first time in a year. And now we can relocate them. Uh, we need four people. Uh, here, let's move the commander. I want the people from Abarsk to see me, all my friends. 
uh, there and I am saying hello to all my friends and uh, if everybody is ready no need to hurry but let's get going we need to turn them around Shkaplarov uh, being carried uh, into the nearby inflatable medical tent to Russian MI-8 helicopters in the background. He'll be followed uh, shortly by Vandehai and Dubrov. They'll get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable flight uh, suits and will board the helicopters fun, for a two-hour flight back to Karaganda, the staging city, where the crew will split up at that point. Vandehai flying on a NASA jet back to Houston the two cosmonauts returning to Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. Hey, hello, everybody. All three crew members now in that medical tent. They'll uh, undergo initial medical testing. The helicopter flight uh, from the landing site back to Karaganda is about two hours in duration. And you can see uh, the descent module on its side. And the view uh, on the front screen of the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolev outside Moscow welcoming back Mark Vandehai after his year-long mission on the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, just to recap, the uh, three crew members uh, of Expedition 66, Mark Vandehai of NASA and Russian cosmonauts Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov, uh, departed the International Space Station at uh, 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time. 
They um, undocked their Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft from the Rossviet module of the International Space Station, backed away to enable uh, Pyotr Dubirov to conduct uh, digital still photography and videography of the Russian segment of the station before uh, a separation maneuver to phase away from the international outpost. A few hours later, uh, the deorbit burn was executed uh, by the crew to uh, slow uh, their spacecraft down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit for its entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and a pinpoint landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern, 5.28 p.m. Kazakhstan Time, about two hours and 20 minutes prior to sunset, uh, local time at the landing site. The Soyuz uh, was pulled over onto its side, which is not unusual uh, by uh, the wind conditions at the landing site, but the landing conditions were near ideal for late March with temperatures in the uh, mid-40s, moderate winds, and clear skies. The three crew members quickly extracted uh, from the Soyuz had a few minutes in uh, chairs that were set up uh, by the capsule to uh, begin a re readaptation to a gravity environment for Van de Heij and Dubrov, the first uh, sensations of gravity in a year since they were launched on April 9, 2021, on the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. They are now all in an inflatable medical tent near the capsule where they're going to be helped out of their Soka launch and entry suits into flight uh, suits and a two-hour flight back uh, to the airport in Karaganda to the uh, northeast of the landing site where uh, Van de Heij will board a NASA jet for the flight back to Houston, Shkaplerov and Dubrov will uh, board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft to return to their homes at their training base at Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. On board the International Space Station, the undocking of uh, Van de Heij Dubrov and uh, Shkaplerov marked the end of Expedition 66 and the formal beginning of Expedition 67 under the command of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn joined uh, by NASA astronauts uh, Raja Chari and Kayla Barron, European Space Agency astronaut uh, Matthias Moore, and Russian cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev, Denis Matveyev, and Sergei Korsakov. Fresh off uh, of the landing of uh, Van de Heij, Dubrov, and Shkaplerov, uh, next up for the International Space Station is the expected uh, launch of the first private astronaut mission through Axiom Space on a SpaceX Crew Dragon, the Endeavour, from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, no earlier than April 6th, with the uh, commander of that mission, former NASA astronaut Mike Lopez Alegria, pilot Larry Connor, and crewmates uh, Eitan Stibbe of Israel and Mark Pathy of Canada, who will uh, fly to the space station for a 10-day mission. Again, a uh, private astronaut mission, opening new ground for the commercialization of low-Earth orbit.